Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in on another episode here on YouTube regarding photography. Um, as you know, last week we discussed about the different type of cameras, you know, which one to pick and choose, which one to buy to kind of allows you to take more photograph. Um, in that episode, I mentioned how important it is to invest your time and energy to learn photography, um, learn framing, learn composition, learn cropping, learn um, how to compose a better image, all right? Um, so in this episode, today I'm going to be sharing the, uh, the techniques, some of the things that I use. I'll be sharing, you know, my cropping, um, um, you know, what I learned over the years. Um, I'll, I'll share that with you guys so that hopefully you can speed up your photography learning um, and hopefully you'll find something useful. So if you are interested, um, here it goes. So um, the first topic we're going to discuss today is cropping and framing, all right? Um, you might say, hey, Tuan, you know, I'm starting photography or well, how can I compose a nice photo? How can I crop or take a photo with nice cropping, all right? Um, so before we start into that, I want to share the three types of images or three type of cropping um, for photos. So the first one is a wide image, wide shot, or it could be an ultra wide photo. Um, what that means, the cropping includes, you know, your head and your feet, so like a wide photo, um, maybe sometimes it encompasses, you know, the background, right? A nice background um, with maybe sky or something. So that's a wide image. So um, for those for those images, cropping, uh, for me, I try to have a nice balanced headroom along with the legroom. I try not to, you know, take it so that way the feet, you know, I'm barely, I'm cutting the feet and have a bunch of headroom or something like that. At least when I started photography, that's what I did the most. Um, and you know, so now looking back, when I do like a wide photo, I, I always include the feet. I always give some some leg room as well, um, you know, below your feet and along with the headroom, so that way it's nicely balanced. Um, you know, in one of my videos, I talked a lot about try to have a nice balanced photo, whether it's you know room toward the left or room to the, the right. So when you are capturing a wide photo or an ultra wide photo, try to crop it in a way so you include feet because a wide image you need to include feet. So make sure you include that when you're taking a wide photo, okay? Um, I do see a lot like at weddings when I see you know some uh, friends and family taking photos, they'll take a wide image but they always cut at the feet. They're always missing the feet or something like that but they always have a lot of headroom. So. Um, you know, if you're one of those people, you know, try to frame it in a way so you lower a little bit, you include some of the feet, it'll be nice, um, you know, for the image, the nice balanced photo. Um, and the next cropping would be, you know, a mid shot or, a, a, you know, a medium cropping, um, you know, a photo. Um, and for those shots, normally at the cropping level, it's like, you know, um, at the chin or, um, you know, at the thigh. Um, so that to me would be a mid shot. So a mid shot is like just a mid, um, you know, don't, not too much background, but just focus on the subject. So in that case, um, when I crop, I try to avoid cutting the joints. Um, what that means is that like at the ankle, okay, cutting the, at the ankle. Normally I do that, I'll cut the shin. Or I'll cut, you know, not at the knee, because that's the joint area, I'll cut above the knee, okay? Um, same thing, you know, try not to cut so much at the belly, um, you know, I'll cut, you know, again, a little bit uh, for a miss shot, always below the belly. I gotta see some, some legs, okay? So in that case, the thigh, you know, or above that knee. That's like what I do mostly. Um, and when I started photography, it was hard for me to see that um, because the camera that I use has an autofocus point like right in the center. Um, and that's, you know, they said that all, when you focus in the middle, it, it's like the fastest focus. So I, was, I would always use that point. And when I take an image, I would always focus on the eye or like a head or something. And my head is always in the middle. And because of that, I have a lot of headroom, all right? And then if I'm cutting, and also when I start doing that, I cut a lot of legs too, okay? So I'm not gonna lie, when I start photography, I was similar you know, to a lot of folks out there just trying to take photos. I'll cut a lot of legs or I'll cut, you know, at the, at the knee area, okay, or the ankle, missing people's feet. Um, but I want to share that with you, which this is totally okay, because, you know, that focus point right in the middle, it, it's hard because in terms of cropping, it forces you, like, let's say the head is right in the middle, so you have a bunch of headroom. But now looking back, now, you know, I'm looking back at my photos, you know, I try to place my head above that midpoint. So that way it's more eye level to the viewer that's looking at the photo, or in this case, as you can see here, my head is above that middle line. Um, it's more at the eye level, okay? So, so that way the headroom is not, you know, I don't have a lot of headroom, okay? So right here in terms of the, the video that you're watching, this is more considered like a mid photo where, you know, I'm either cutting, you know, at the shin area, but you see my headroom, I don't have a lot of head and my head is not right in the middle, okay? So 
that to me in terms of cropping and mid, mid shot, I try, like I said, avoid the joint area. So in this case, your knee, your ankle, keep at the, the shin or the thigh, avoid you know your your elbow joint area so avoid those if you can and then watch for the headroom okay once you avoid that some some image have a bunch of headroom and it's not lead balance okay so even you know that first topic that i mentioned about like an ultra wide you still kind of try to you know lower that headroom too not too tight where you're like you know cutting but have enough headroom so there's like breathing room i call it like breathing room have some breathing room so it's nicely balanced for you know uh, from the thigh level or your shin level okay so that's for a mid shot okay um, and then the next type of photo would be a close-up photo. And close-up photo, you know, I mentioned I said avoid cutting the belly, but for close-up, it could work. If you are focusing on just the head and you've got to cut the, 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 you know, the belly or something, or you focus on just the ear, just the eyes, or, you know, just hands-wise, you, you are cropping in a way that is just focusing on that subject um, and, and making sure that, you know, the headroom is nicely balanced. Or um, if you focus on the, ha the, the arm, for example, that room above that or below that is nicely balanced as well. So for example, if I'm focusing a close-up photo of just the head or a couple kissing or something like that, I would cut by the chest or even at the belly. But I, that would also mean cutting this, you know, my headroom down a little bit too, but cut it in a way where I'm not going below my hairline, okay? So it's okay to cut the head just a little bit to balance it. If, you, if I'm like this, it, it's nicely balanced, but I don't wanna go too low where I'm like, okay, now I'm at the forehead or at the eye, okay? So watch that. But those are some of, I want you to understand the three type of, of images first. One is a wide or ultra wide, um, followed by, you know, mid shot, which is, that's the type of shots that we take mostly of. Um, and for mid shot, try your best to cut the shin um, you know, or above the knee, okay? Avoid the joints. And for wide shot, make sure to include the feet, all right? Because um, that's something that I started out uh, cutting mostly too. Um, so, you know, like I'm at a reception and I see people just taking photos and they're focusing on the middle point, but they don't, the, the feet is always cut off or something. Um, but they're not, they're not taking a middle shot, a miss shot, because they have a lot of headroom, okay? Um, so for, for a mid shot, it's okay to cut the feet. But, you know, for that headroom, you got to pull it down a little bit so it's nicely balanced, okay? So I'm talking here more in terms for taking portraits, okay? Taking every day of your important loved ones. Um, for landscape photography, uh, I don't specialize in that. And so strictly I'm sharing just the cropping and the framing technique more for taking pictures of people. And I hope that um, you find it useful. So those three things, uh, and those are my, my, my framing and cropping technique in camera. Um, of course, once you, you take it, you can always fix it later on. You can cut the headroom and, and whatever you can in, in Lightroom and other, um, you know, editing software. Um, but, but try to, to, to have that, um, you know, on top, on the back of your mind when you, when you take an image. So that way it's already nicely composed. So you don't have to do so much behind the scene, all right? So that's with um, cropping and that's with framing. So we're going to segue into composition. Um, and you might ask, hey, Tuan, do you have any composition technique that you use? Um, now that maybe you can share. Of course I do. Um, I have three of them and I'm going to share those three to you. Um, my first one is rule the third. Um, and if you don't know photography, you might like, hey Tuan, what is rule the third? So rule the third necessarily means um, taking an image and placing it, you know, one third of the frame, uh, one third of the frame of the camera, whether it is, you know, horizontal or whether it is vertically, um, but it's one third. That means, you know, on the side, one third of the side, you know, whether left or right, same thing with, with horizontal line. And it works really well when I take, you know, an individual, um, you know, whether my son or my wife or, excuse me, or, or like a couple, all right? So if I'm doing rule the third for like a couple, I gotta make sure the couple is together, whether they are hugging or they're kissing, they gotta be together. Because if they're holding hands, splitting up, so there's room between them, it's gonna be really hard to work for rule of third. And for rule of third, what I found is that it works really well for like simple background, you know? So that way the subjects really stand out. Um, you know, for simple background, whether it's just, you know, the lake or something like that, or just simple, you know, street or something like that, or mountain, just very simple background, it works really well. Um, and like I said, very, just like it said, rule the third, so one third of the frame, try that. Um, whether you're doing a wide shot or whether you're doing a mid shot, one third of the frame, all right? So the next, the next um, what is it, composition technique that I use would be framing. So framing would be using the foreground, using the background to frame your subject or the object that you're trying to capture. Um, and I use this a lot too because um, when I'm outside looking, there's always foreground stuff around in front of you, whether it's with people or just things in front of you, and you can use that to frame your subject. 
um, you know, sometime, or it could be you're, you're shooting, there's a good background where that's, that's a cave, you know, that has a big hole right here, and then you can just place a subject right in the middle. That hole itself is framing, it's framing your subject. Um, or, you know, through, there's a hole between a tree or something like that. Or there's, um, you know, a nice box um, frame, you know, somehow you're in, in city streets or something. Um, or the stair that is, you know, has a, a nice, you know, just a, a small uh, triangular frame or something. And you can place a subject right in the frames. And that's called framing. You're using the foreground or, or the background or just things, right, uh, you know, that you have in front of you to frame the subject. So that way it's easier um, well, um, and to process for the eyes to look at the image. So then it, it, it's telling the eyes, hey, you know, I'm framing this image. This is a subject. Look right into that. So it's easier. Same thing with rule of third. Um, I don't know the calculation, I'm not very technically, uh, you know, um, savvy, but they said, you know, the rule of third, it works well for the eyes, it's a nicely calculated balanced composition, so the eyes process it uh, faster and better to look at the, the subject. So that, now with framing, of course, like I said, you're framing something, so it already drawn your eye to the subject or the object that you're trying to, to capture or trying to convey here. Um, so that's with framing, all right? And the next uh, technique that I use, and you can see some of my images on my website, would be leading the line. Um, and with the surrounding that we see on air every day, there's a lot of lines, like I mentioned in my video. There's vertical lines, there, there's horizontal lines. Um, Sometimes you, you're shooting on a train track, you know, there's lines you know, that meets the horizon. So you use those lines and place the subject, whether at the end or in the middle. So that way, you look at those lines, it's actually leading to the subject, all right? Um, let's say for like a train track or something, using, using the train track lines to lead the, the viewer to your subject. Or you can use lines from staircase, you know, as spiral lines or something like that. To spiral and you place the subject right in the middle, that's leading the line. Uh, using lines from buildings, you, you know, just diagonal lines that leads toward the subject. So um, be on the lookout, whatever that you're shooting, the environment that you're in, there can be a lot of lines that you can use and leverage that to uh, bring out your subject even more for the viewer to look at. Um, so, um, you know, try those, those three compositions and, and let me know if it works for you. Um, another aspect for these composition techniques is that um, you have to be able to be familiarized with you know, the surrounding that you're in. Like I mentioned, the first one, the rule of third, it works a lot well for me when there's very simple background. So let's say you're in an environment where it's simple and it could work really well for rule of third. If you're in, you know, a background situation or an environment where there's just very crowded and noisy and stuff, you can use those noise as framing, to frame, use those and frame your subject. Um, or if it's like, you know, busy line streets with a bunch of, you know, electrical lines, etc. You can use those lines to frame or lead it to the, the subject, leading the line. So it's important to kind of understand first your surrounding, the environment that you are shooting. And you'd be like, huh, oh, those, you know, those are horizontal lines or those are diagonal lines. It could work if I place my subject here. So understand and, and be, be, you know, on the lookout for all these um, things that is, you know, the setting that you're shooting your photograph in and use that to leverage to bring your subject or the object that you're shooting out even more. Um, and, and all these composition techniques, it can be broken, don't get me wrong here. Um, these are something at least, you know, it, it works, it works for me, um, but it can be broken. You don't have to apply to everything. Um, but more importantly, look out for all these, these things that you see. Sometimes you don't really need, need to take photos. You can just be on the lookout for um, your images that you see, whether at the mall or um, you know, on Facebook or from other photographers and, and see what composition technique they're using and learn from that. It could be rule the third, it could be framing, it could be leading the line. Those are the three that I use the most. Um, and then learn that and process that and save that. So in your memory bank, memory bank, so the next time that you're out there, you can see that same environment or that same situation, then you can apply that to it because it, it requires a lot of familiarity um, to see your, uh, you know, the setting and then apply those type of techniques to it, okay? It takes a lot of time too, okay? And all of this that I'm sharing here is be like, oh man, it's easy said than done. Of course it's easy said than done. It took me years to kind of like learn and to this day I'm still learning. So, um, you know, don't be discouraged, you know, apply, use some of this and try it and practice it. You know, you might not get it the first time. You'll be like, ah, oh, okay, how come I see the images? It looks so good, but I can't even take it. It's okay. It was. I was like that when I started. You know, I, I have an eye for like, you know, seeing something that's nice looking, but that does not mean, you know, I can take or recreate that. And that's okay, it takes time to practice. 
um, you know, try rule the third and be like, huh, man, this environment didn't even work for it. And that's okay. So now the next time that you see something, the same setting, you might not apply that. Um, so to this day, the more that I see, the more that I apply, and it goes the same for lighting, okay? Like, you know, if you're familiar with the one lighting, the more that you have, now you just show up, you just know, okay, there's that lighting, this lighting, this, you know, you just know this will work well. And maybe I'll cover that in the next video, but in this case, uh, for this video, we're just talking about composition framing, um, we talk about, you know, cropping as well. So practice all these things, all right? So, so start with the cropping first, so then you get, have a nicely balanced photo. Then occasionally try to, you know, look based on the uh, background or, or the setting that you're shooting, apply maybe rule the third, apply maybe lean the line, or if you see a nice frame, apply framing to your subject and see how that go and eventually you, you get better at it. Um, you know, just the more that you practice and, and be on the lookout for seeing, you know, background, foreground, because who knows, this, you might catch, you know, a nice composition that could work for that, all right? So I hope that helps. Keep on practicing and, um, you know, give me feedback. Be like, hey, Tuan, maybe this, man, whatever you said totally works. Or, hey, Tuan, man, some of these didn't work. Or, hey, Tuan, can you elaborate a little bit more? Go ahead and direct message, um, you know, me on Facebook, and I'll be more than happy to share what I know with you guys because at the end of the day, again, my goal is hopefully that you can get better um, photographing so that way you can take pictures of your friend, f uh, friends and families um, that they can use and you can look at it, you know, 10, 20 years, 30 years from now. So you have photos, okay? Not like me, not having a lot of big pictures. So um, I hope that helps um, and I'll see you in my next video, okay? All right, take care.